I think they're gorgeous. Just that I planted something and it's growing. My daughter complained. She said, Mommy, all this stuff that you grow, you could buy at the Acme market. I said, but the joy of it is I planted it and I, it's mine. I grew it. And I asked her, I said, Allison, I, I just did some string beans. She wants some. She said, yeah, I'll take some. She called me back. She said, Mommy, these are so good. I said, Allison, they're right out of the ground. You know, they haven't traveled hours and days away. They haven't sat in a warehouse. Fresh vegetables. It's wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. The number that was used a great deal through the, um, the late 90s and into 2000s was um, 30,000 vacant lots. But that was before the city also took down about 10,000 more uh, abandoned and dangerous buildings. So I think the number that's often quoted now is at least 40,000. About half of those are, are owned by the city and the other half are still privately owned but often tax delinquent. There have been um, more than a thousand community gardens that were started over the last 30 years. Mm -hmm. There's at least several hundred that are still active. And there are areas of the city where all the little vacant lots, you know, have, have been sold off to developers and they're the only green spaces are the ones that the land trust through the city's efforts were able to kind of buy and donate to us. A garden like this just can't be reproduced and, and it is a large parcel. So it's really uh, an important you know, green asset that we want to make sure stays permanent and now it is in the land trust. This is my asparagus patch right in here. It took us 20 years, I think, um, to get the city to say, oh yeah, yeah, we'll never develop that, we'll never develop that. And we were like, great, then why don't you give us the title? Basically the gardeners <coughs> do all that they were doing before. They're all managed by the community itself. But what we provide is we can make it, you know, apply for tax exemption and we hold a liability policy that covers all of the gardeners and any of their visitors. The city of Philadelphia cannot donate land to individuals. It has to have a legal entity that can hold title. And so either they have to form one or they have to form a larger one that people can use, which is what NGA is. And so rather than asking individual gardens like Aspen Farms to be its own 501c3, the idea was in Philadelphia we thought it would be better to have a citywide organization, which has worked very well. A urban gardening agreement is about a 15-page document and it does require the gardening group to have its own liability insurance uh, to use the property. There have been some gardeners that have formed their own 501c3 and have purchased property um, from the city and it was given to them. Also, I mean, that's through the council person. So I, you know, I know I say that a lot, but it's really key. It's a key component of the whole process. Um, or there are gardens that have been lucky enough um, to you know, get on the list for uh, preservation through NGA. There are about um, 10 or so urban land trusts around the country. The NGA is one of the oldest. Any garden from any area that the Horticultural Society was working with or a community group wanted to ask the land trust to hold their land, um, they could apply. And the idea was that we formed a legal 501c3 nonprofit. If there is a group that is uh, looking to start a community garden involving the community is, is one of the most important steps. And then of course the next step is, you know, having a piece of ground that you can garden on. There are different websites that you can go to and you can look up a parcel of land and it will show you who the owner is. Um, and I mean, if you don't have access to a computer, um, usually in your council person's office there's a community relations person and they can look up that information for you. In Philadelphia we have a city council and those city council people are basically the kings and queens of their districts, which is why Eileen referred often to right. make them your friend. Um, because as much as a garden might be very important and well liked, the city council person has to speak up for it to become part of 
uh, for the, if it's city land, for it to be donated into the land trust. We get grants from foundations and private individuals for most of the operations of the land trust. And in addition to that, we also did apply and we now get some of the community block grant funds that came come through HUD to the city. And those funds are specific and only can be used for garden improvements. And here at Aspen Farms, a lot of money has gone into the improvements, not only from NGA, but the Horticultural Society, University of Pennsylvania, a lot of good partners have helped do things. But basically when the land trust was formed, what we said was, we'll hold your title, we'll make you tax exempt, we'll provide liability, and the rest of it is hands off. This is for the less fortunate. We give, it to, we give food to the, an organization that feeds the homeless. And so far we've given them peppers, eggplant, tomatoes, uh, cucumbers. We have not ever had the kind of money to purchase, you know, large parcels of, or even small parcels of land. Um, so that most of the land in the land trust has been donated by the city. Um, and then some of them we have had like a rotating uh, acquisition fund where we bought a parcel for like 25000 and then the gardeners agree that they'll fundraise for 10 years and pay it back as slowly as they need to or as quickly as they can. And then we can, you know, use that money to then go ahead and purchase another group. A study that was done at the Wharton School of Business mm -hmm. at the University of Pennsylvania, its focus I think was more like what added value street trees and community gardens had on a neighborhood. The American Community Gardening Association has mm -hmm. also, I think, now been able to pull together some of the studies from around the country. If a group wanted to find out more about what groups are, are in their area, I'd suggest that they talk to the Land Trust Alliance. We have a How to Start uh, a Land Trust, which is pretty generic, uh, on our website, um, which they can find under Neighborhood Gardens Association. I would say to groups that are out there starting, please investigate a public entity that might be able to serve the kind of functions that we do because it will just eliminate you know some of the operating operation kind of issues and dollars that you might need and you have an entity that will be there in perpetuity we got a title from the national park service um, and the city holds the land title but it's permanently leased to us be so we can provide the liability but the gardeners were very, very um, clear that, and the National Park Service, that they wanted it in the deed that it would remain for all time, a community green space and open space. It's a very valuable piece of property today, and it was when it was donated, but it is now probably quadrupled at least in terms of its value. And the city could make a lot of money um, selling it to a developer. But there is now the, the rider in the lease, the reverter clause, that says that they can't do that. If I was a butterfly, this is where I'd live. <laughs>